Thank you very much to Georgie here, Shepin, whatever that is his name there, who put this article out about. Oh, I better put my little, um, I'm going to put one of those on there, um, who uh, put this video out. And what it is, is I'm going to show you some pictures of what people are making videos about and what they believe. But then we're going to read what he is saying. So what other people do is they say that it is a fence erected for rabbits and dingoes. And you can see why they're saying it, because they're saying after the dingoes and the rabbits weren't there, obviously the sheep and everything else could flourish. But now it means there's nothing really looking after the kangaroos who are multiplying and multiplying. And now it has ruined some of the land for some of the other animals. But they said, what do they care as long as they've got their farming on the go? But anyway, we're going to move on because it started off with this fence appearing down here and then it went across there and up to there. So it's down. I mean, Gillian lives in here. She's never gone on about the fence before. So I was just taking pictures through the video. So that... <coughs> Because I think, uh, yeah, those counties add up to 64% of where people live. And then this part of the fence down to here is 3,400, but it carries on. 1859. Um, it was the English. Um, they came. Supposingly it was the English, but it's worse than that. It's probably just the Roman Empire that did it. But the English came, said they wanted different things. And I think the sheep industry is worth, say, six million because that's dollars anyway that's the other side where the fence is there and all they're talking about is animals the fence is there for the animals amazing and you're not allowed to go the other side which just just seems incredible that the bottom part of Australia no one can live there then I'm sure they do I don't really understand this but so that's what they're saying it is 5600 kilometers i think he says uh there's no dingoes in this bit but there's dingoes in that bit but um i thought people live to stop the dingoes i thought people lived in the bottom part of australia let's just go and ooh, let's just go and have a look we're going to put the picture up of the map to show you where people can't go but if you look down here Melbourne's there and Sydney's there and Brisbane's there and people live there let's just have a look so that cuts off quite a lot of Australia and I think what it is is that this bit here is where but my son lives down the bottom my son when he moved to Australia he's had to move there he's moving next year but they're saying it's a dingo fence dividing Australia from Antarctica down the bottom here and then you've got this map here and then that map goes up here because we already showed pictures of that but my son lives down here I don't quite understand how this fence works and if it keeps you out because I said if we go back here Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne are there but it kind of makes sense with what an Adelaide is there I think that's where my son lives near Adelaide um <clears throat> what is this the is this it here is that where i don't know their roads but don't quite understand what this person is saying because i think this is more twisted so this is still here i, I don't know anyway australia is a huge place let's let's look up on here if they show it press on this you can see this is the dingo fence and southern end of the dingo fence and over here it does say 5,000 kilometre fence to stop dingoes eating livestock. But what the other person is saying is that it's to stop people going. It's part, this is all part of Antarctica. <laughs> it is colder down here than it is up here. I mean, it's quite warm where Gillian is. It's quite, it's much colder down here. What's your thoughts <clears throat> about that with the dingo fence? Because, you know, there are other towns in here, Adelaide, Melbourne, but you can see, obviously, it's over here, but it's, it's, it comes down, I, I don't know, maybe it was how they split up Australia before, it's called a dingo fence, but um, surely it would be in the middle then, and you keep, you know, because not that many people live in the middle part of Australia, or even here, keep them in here, put the dingo fence out, 
and then this would stop. I don't know, because like, most people don't live in the middle of Australia, do they? They live around the edges, around here. I don't know, what's your thoughts? Tell me what you think. We'll watch the video of what the person says and then leave your comments. Yeah, so this is um, somebody else's video and he explains that this wall, this wall has been put up to keep the dingoes out. Um, oh dear, look at that. It keeps happening. I keep putting my... Um, I'm going to start again, Mickey. You did it again. It ha yeah, so anyway, we're back now. I'm just going to obviously put this in. This isn't my video. This is someone else's video. Um, and he's trying to explain that um, they made this fence to keep rabbits and dingoes out. Um, but as you can see, it kept jumping. So basically, I'm talking over the top and playing his video below. But anyway, he's talking about the 5,600 miles. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be playing the next part of the video. It's um, so it's not a video; it, it's a, a post. And um, obviously, explain what he's explaining that basically this wall, one side of the wall, then it's Antarctica you're in. And, and Australia adjoins Antarctica and this great big plateau which Bird talks about, Admiral Bird, is in this area but obviously they're not, they're saying that it was all done because the dingoes and the rabbits and um, he even explains in here about a toad, it made a toad explode with um, the population explode because it didn't have a, it didn't have a uh, uh, nothing was going to eat it. <laughs> anyway, when Australia changed like that, well, I'm not sure if we know if that's true, but if it moved like that, a lot of the animals that are in Australia are only in Australia. They're not anywhere else in the world. But when you think about that, that's a bit weird, isn't it? I suppose nowhere else has kangaroos, but I suppose they don't have camels. So I suppose some countries have their own animals, but there's lots of animals. He's saying there's a lot of animals in Australia that are just native to Australia. But then he talks about the English coming. Look at it. Oh, God, that's another story. But that's the Romans, isn't it? Yeah, Captain Cook. Um, but anyway, they turned up and because came in colonies after that, you know, obviously moved there and then the animals come and they're saying, well, the animals were being eaten by the dingoes and everything. This is why they built the, war the fence. Yeah, and they eat camels and things. There you go, sheep, horses, camels. And they brought these animals over. But what he's saying is now they've done that and they've put the wall up, it now changes things. Because obviously our eco-environment is finely tuned. And when you change it, it causes, like you'll see it in this video, then the sand dunes appear over top now so that changes the weather because the reason i wanted to just talk about that just for a little bit is that nim put a comment in because obviously they're doing the 15 minute cities in paris and she's because they're saying what and nim says oh they've stolen our temp our weather but what he's saying in this video which is why i included it um oh that's an advert hang on oh i'll just get rid of that bit hang on i'm gonna stop it yeah that basically you know, changing the environment of Australia has caused sand dunes to appear, and they're going up uh, uh, Australia. That causes the weather to change, and it just goes on and on like that. It's just causing. So that's where your weather's gone, Nim. It's because they've changed your environment, and over the years, it's just changed. So I thought that was a bit interesting with him, right? You know, with the e ecology of everything. Oh, I think anyway, here we go. Some of those that the British bought when they were settling, they needed obviously wool and meat and stuff like that. The Australians were. Uh, oh, I think we're getting to it now. It's roughly where the map was, all the green bit. They've, that's what it looks like on the other one. Um, so there you go. It's going. It's starting to disappear because obviously. That's it, the dingoes were, were killing everything, so this is why the wall, the fence came. This is what he's saying, and this is what he's seen in the history. But of course, the other person's saying it's because it's a gateway to Antarctica, and so they shut it off. So, well, we'll just carry So basically he's saying, look, now kangaroos obviously fight the humans. <laughs> um, so obviously, 
Yeah, come on then, and they'll mess up the food system. Oh, here we go. And the erosion of the soil. The whole ecosystem relies on this balance. It's all connected to the great circle of life. And the Europeans didn't like the diagnosis in eating and well, there is. I can't, I can't go that fast, but you can read it just about. Uh, Yeah, he's just explaining something there. I'll we'll come into it in just a moment. Basically, he's just having all these animals changed the ecosystem in Australia, and it made the has made the weather change. I mean, that kind of fits into everything that Nim's noticing then, because she says that France has got their weather, but they haven't. They've just done something. Maybe I don't know. And of course, we've got um, harp, haven't we? That does a lot of things and mod weather modification. Um, so none of that's good either. But, you know, he even talks in a short period of time. Animals are going to be extinct. And that, and I agree with him. Oh, here it is. This is the bit. Oh, another advert. Got to get past that. We're back on here now. So, which means kind of sky... Yeah, it's a, yeah, a skyrocketed. Yeah. They're eating all the grass and vegetation. The smaller animals aren't getting enough food. So this is when he's saying the decline in animals. And here we are, the soil, the oils, and the wind picks up and creates giant dunes. And this has all served as a wall. To, it's basically changing the weather patterns. That's what he's saying there. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it, to when Nim feels that it probably is, because man is changing everything. And to be honest, this person at the end of the video does say that Instead of trying to beat it, we should learn to live with it, and we'd probably do a lot better then if we learnt to live with the place we live on, rather to control it. But he doesn't realise that's part of the Roman Empire. Most people don't understand that we're still under that Roman Empire. But anyway, it was very interesting just listening, because I wanted to see what people were saying about the dingo wall. And basically, it's just that it was to keep the animals out. But I, the other guy, which we're going to listen to in a second, is talking about it's the gateway to Antarctica. So I just wondered what your thoughts were and um, yeah, leave messages and tell me what you think. Obviously it's probably the second one, isn't it, when it's a gateway to Antarctica. We're just waiting for this video to finish because people might be interested in whipping through the words that he says. This is it. Anyway, blah, blah. so far I've been able to engineer our way. Quite a lot of things, experiments, breaking. Come on. It's coming to the end now. But man, no, that's it, that's it, here we go. And puts it back in its place. Maybe we'll wake up to actually start, uh, in the, put this into practice with indigenous communities who have known forever how to learn to survive on Earth. Yeah, and he's got a little bit of music, what's going on? Oh, that's the end. Yeah, so we can live together in peace with the place we live in and the animals. Anyway, let's carry on with the next bit seen the other video and it's talking about rabbits and dingoes but this one's showing something a little bit different it's saying Australia is a small peninsula of a huge Antarctic continent divided by a fence so what we're going to do is over here because it's quite a long um yeah, he's written quite a lot here so, or in fact, maybe we'll go to the main page. Hang on a second. This is their Facebook, and they do seem to have uh, other pictures up there. Yeah, oh. What's, what's that there? Is that the peninsula? Anyway, we'll have a look in a minute, but um, yeah, that might be. Is that England and France? Don't know. But anyway, you can see these ones here. Now, we're going to read a bit of this because obviously they're saying it's for, for rabbits and dingoes. It says, Australia is a small peninsula of a huge Antarctic continent. <clears throat> First Antarctic expedition was 1928 to 1930. In 1928 to 30, Bird Expedition was the first American expedition to explore the Antarctic since the US, exploring it in 1840. The program was first to utilise the aeroplane, commercial camera, snowmobile and massive communication resources. On November the 28th, 29, Bird, along with pilot Brent Balchin, co-pilot radio man Harold June and photographer Ashley McKinley, 
made their first historic flight over a small portion of Antarctica in 18 hours 41 minutes from a military base in South Australia, close to the 5,500-331 kilometres long electric fence. The photos which were taken during the historic flight never reached the public. Don't confuse the real Australia with the fake one. Adelaide and South Australian coastline is the true geographic map are not in South Australia with the ocean Indian below it stretching towards the South Pacific Ocean which is the furthest southeast land of Australia. South Austra Australia, Victoria, New SW, uh, SW and Queenland are all in East Australia which is the east coastline of the Australian Peninsula as the land extension of Antarctic continent stretching up all the way to Papua. So it's a back at the pictures, where are they? Oh, they're not on this one are they? Or oh, they must be at the bottom. Oh, there they are. <clears throat> yeah. So we're down here now. Admiral Richard Evelyn Bird flew from Australia's southern border towards southerly direction and discovered that land extended in a continuation for at least 5,000 miles beyond Australia's southern border towards the Antarctic continent and during this flight he did not see any ocean or sea. The new land which Admiral Bird saw on the flight route from southern border of Australia towards Antarctica has a territory as big as the surface of the US in fact much bigger than the US that has never been seen by human being which extends southwards from Australia at least 5,000 miles with moderate climate diverse animal life vegetation minerals etc until it reaches icy climate and the ice wall penguins and whales abound in this previously assumed desolate area of ice and glaciers in eternal darkness and that the mountains held a fabulous fortune in coal and ores just like the abundance of coal and ore in Australia. No wonder because it is the same land divided by man made 5,531 kilometres long electric fence to separate Australian Peninsula from the rest of the same land mass um, continuance of Antarctic continent. According to Admiral Byrd's report, he mentioned that Antarctica surrounded by a very high wall. This very high wall is actually the Antarctic plateau of 10,000 feet, 3,048 meters high, extending beyond the unknown 5,000 mile land. In continuation southwards from Australia's southern border, marked only by 5,332 kilometer long electric fence. Australian Peninsula and the continuation of the 5,000 miles forbidden land across the electric fence are on an average on a much lower sea level in comparison to the rest of the huge um, Antarctic higher plateau of 3,048 metres above sea, not to count mountains as high as 5,000 metres. After 1935, America, in agreement with the countries of the Alliance, led by Britain and Russia at that time, put a fake map of the land of ice called the Antarctic map where Antarctica showed a clustered spot. It indicates after the dark and very cold land there is land that birds saw, meaning there is light according to his, wor his words, who also stated and said that it had a moderate climate and a diverse animal life. Soon after Admiral Byrd's announcement of the unknown land, the Antarctic Treaty was signed declaring the land neutral, setting aside the site as a scientific reservoir, sorry, reserve, establishing freedom of scientific investigation and prohibiting military activities. Soon after that, Antarctica was declared forbidden zone for the public and a special international Antarctic military force was created to patrol the borders and make sure no one crosses it fence for rabbits so this is obviously what I just told you the two meter high fence 10,000 volts 
and 5,531 kilometres long electric fence in Australia is guarded by the army. The public are told that the fence was built to keep the rabbits out and the dingoes. Australia holds many world records including the world's longest fence, known as the dingo fence at 5,531 kilometres. The dingo barrier fence stretches from south eastern coast to the southwestern coast of Australia. Antarctic Peninsula. The fence was erected in the late 1800s and the 1900s to protect cropland from rabbits. Crossing over the fence by humans or rabbits is forbidden. This and there is a 25,000 fine or jail term if someone tries to get over the fence. Death penalty for the rabbits. Australian Aboriginals say that beyond the fence is another world free from poverty and diseases or diseases well that makes sense but anyway yeah i just wondered if everybody knew that about australia that a part of it doesn't exist because it's in this fence and once you're in the fence that's the other side so yeah what's your thoughts about that then